Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog presents Carnage Week. And we are back with another episode focusing on Cletus Cassidy, Carnage. And in this one, we're going to talk about how we got to be Carnage again. Because there's been a lot of times in the comics, like, you know, once we got thrown up into space and ripped in half. We talked about that. Uh, then we talked about, uh, you know, him being eaten by Venom. So what happened after he was eaten by Venom was that Cletus Cassidy didn't have a suit anymore. He actually went out, he covered himself in red paint at one point, and he took a knife and he was like, fine, I'll just be serial killer Cletus Cassidy and I'll just I'll just still hurt people. And Spider-Man was able to stop him pretty easily because he didn't have any super strength or superpowers, and he got put back into Ravencroft. So where this story takes place is at, after those events where Cletus is still in Ravencroft and he still has that little piece, that little sliver of carnage still in him, just waiting to absorb or be a part of another symbiote again so it can expand and grow inside Cletus Cassidy. So he's, you know, sitting there struggling with this. He's in his cell and he's like, all right, I, I have carnage in me, but not enough to get free. I need to get free out of here. Uh, and so he's like, but you know what? The guards always underestimate me and I, I feel something calling me. He's like, I feel a calling. This is, I mean, you know, Howard Mackey wrote this and I like a lot of stuff Howard Mackey wrote, but there were some times in Spider-Man comics, especially with the symbiotes, where it felt like some corners were cut where you're just like, all right, he just hears a calling and then he just, you know, breaks out of jail, gets into a truck and he drives away and you're just like, how did he accomplish all this? And then he just wraps it up by saying, well, the guards always underestimate me at Ravencroft. And you're like, Okay, I, I guess that's an, uh, an answer in a way. Um, but still, there's like laser grids and there's like all these things like that were put in place by John Jameson. I guess at this point, John Jameson was no longer head of security uh, after It's a Wonderful Life. So maybe that's the reason. I don't know. Uh, but either way, Cletus Cassidy uh, gets free and he gets in a truck. He starts driving off and Spider-Man shows up to stop him. And then as, you know, Spider-Man, you know, arrives, he jumps on the car hood or the truck hood. And the two of them get sucked into a parallel dimension. Some random alleyway just had a, a vortex open up. And that's where Cletus Cassidy heard the calling from. And so he drove towards it and when spider-man heard the you know the commotion of a truck out of control and crashing into things he swung in saw that it was carn or cletus cassidy jumped on the hood and the two of them drove right through into the vortex and when they get to the other side they're falling through this like you know rift in time and space and spider-man starts to recognize it as the negative zone which is a place where the Fantastic Four have gone before, and Spider-Man has gone before, even recently when he uh, met the character Dusk, which was like this character in all black that was like, you know, had shadow powers and stuff. And so we're gonna meet Dusk again in this story, uh, but so Spider-Man has been here before and he knows the Fantastic Four have been here, and it's like an alternate world, uh, kind of like the Phantom Zone in, Sp uh, in Superman, but the Negative Zone is like its own, you know, universe with people in it and everything. And uh, but they're not all criminals or bad people, obviously. But characters like Annihilus can sometimes come from there, or in this case, Blastar, uh, the Bomb Blast, I think is his name, or something along those lines. Just some crazy character, <laughs> and he's a uh, Blastar is like trying to take over this world. And he took uh, this random, you know, a civilian and threw him into the life stream, which is where Spider-Man's swinging through right now. And apparently anything that goes in there could be obliterated. But Spider-Man sees this guy floating through. He can't find Cletus Cassidy. So he grabs this stranger and then brings him back into, you know, through a nearby pocket. And they end up back in the right world of the negative zone where the guy came from. And the guy's like, look, I'm from here. And uh, thank you for helping me. He goes, but, uh, but the real threat is this Blastar guy. We got to stop him. And then Blastar's like, you know, trying to take over the, the world and he's trying to rule this area. He has like, you know, people that turned on their own people that are siding with them. And, uh, and then they're trying to like, you know, hurt all these people. So all the people that work or live in the city, they all got out. They're all hiding in like the mountains somewhere. And this guy, this stranger was like, they're the one leading them. And he led them all out of the city because he figured Blastar will probably destroy the city. And he even says to Spider-Man, look, it doesn't matter if the city gets destroyed as long as the people survive because we can rebuild it. And Spider-Man's like, okay, so what's the plan? And the guy's like, well, first I need to get my costume. So he goes back into like the mountain area where the people are. And he gets his costume, and it turns out this guy, this random stranger, is Dusk. And he and, and Spider-Man's like, Dusk, holy cow! Like we've met before, we've you know talked and hung out. And the guy's like, I know. He's like, I just didn't want to you know play my hand right away, and I didn't want Blastar to know that I'm you know that I'm Dusk. Basically, he's like, so now that we're you know suited up and everything, and Spider-Man even has a new suit that he got out of nowhere, which was his Spider-Man Unlimited suit from the Spider-Man Unlimited cartoon. And uh, I'm just like, wow, it's so like again, just uh, things that happen randomly. Um, but then when Spider-Man was falling through the uh, the time and space thing, 
he was seeing images of uh, the high evolutionary and like you know all these different people and those were all characters that were in the Spider-Man cartoon around this time so I don't know if Howard Mackey was trying to tie into that or if he just wanted to have a nod to that or something I don't know but uh, it was cool anyway to see Spider-Man in, in that costume again because it's kind of a neat costume and then uh, you know him and Dusk team up they go to fight Blastar and then Blastar turns out he's hooked up to this machine and he's ready to you know turn it on but it looks like it might annihilate everything like everything so so they're like look if you turn on that machine nothing will exist you'll be the conqueror of nothing because everything will be wiped out and he's kind of debating if he should still do that or not but meanwhile he's already teamed up with Cletus Cassidy and Cletus Cassidy's like no I thought you were going to wipe everyone out I he's like I always killed people one at a time but you're literally talking about killing trillions of lives you know lives all at once so he's like so no you're my idol man you you got to pull that trigger you got to do it and Blastar's like no he's like what's the point of being a king if I'm a king of nothing so he's like power down the machine and Cletus is like no so Cletus like runs out and he, he like you know hears the calling still and he runs out and he finds this uh tube uh, like buried in the earth or in that earth anyway and he digs it up and it turns out there's a symbiote inside so again corner cutting like the type of writing you're just like really like all you know it's everything's just so convenient uh to get everything back uh back in place and uh and really all the to get carnage back into carnage you really didn't need to do this like alternate universe story venom ate the suit and then venom got you know plucked apart by this governor guy who had powers why didn't the carnage suit just like while the venom suit was weakened you know, break free from it and go back to Cletus. Like, that's the easiest story to tell. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I got to give him credit for trying something different, I guess, or less predictable. Uh, so anyway, the, the, the book is overall kind of fun, but it's a little weird. And like I said, some corner cutting because they do all this in two issues. And so Cletus Cassidy now has a suit again. He puts it on. It taps into the little bit of carnage that was left in him. And then they bond together and they strengthen him. And then boom, once again, he is carnage. And then so he goes back, tries to turn on the machine, and then Blastar and uh, and Spider-Man and Dusk all have to stop him, break the machine, they shut it down, they save everybody, and then once again Carnage and I think Blastar and Spider-Man all get sucked back up into the vortex and through time and space again, and Spider-Man and Cletus get sent back to their home world, and presumably Blastar does too, although we don't really see it happen in the book. And then once Spider-Man and uh, Cletus show up back on Earth, they're back in the alleyway, the cops that were like looking for them only like moments had passed i guess since they disappeared where it felt like you know you know a day or two for spider-man it was only like a minute or two here in our world so when the cops show up you know they they see the truck crashed they see cletus cassidy and they grab him and they arrest him thinking he doesn't have the suit or the powers but as they're bringing him away bringing him back to uh you know like the the, the squad car he like opens his eyes and his eyes are red and stuff so it looks like he's still carnage and you know he's going to be back as carnage again from here on out and we'll talk about more carnage adventures coming up we obviously know he goes and becomes you know carnage in venom versus carnage which we already talked about but after that series and after toxin was introduced there were two mini series one was just called carnage at the time but when they co collected it in a trade paperback they changed the name to carnage family feud so that's the one we're going to talk about next and then after that we're going to get into carnage usa and then on friday we're going to talk about carnage born the new web of carnage or web of venom comic book written by donny cates so we'll talk about that on friday so we got a whole week of venom stuff or a whole week of carnage stuff i should say so hopefully you guys are enjoying the shows and if so let me know down in the comments below what you think of the story have you read it yourself and uh, if you want i'll put a link down below to the carnage classic trade paperback you can pick that up It'll have a ton of Carnage stuff in it. Everything we talked about in Carnage Week 1 from like 150 episodes ago, uh, that one, you know, like that whole week we did like five episodes on it, all of those stories and the two I've talked about this week so far are all found in Carnage Classics. So make sure you go pick that up. It's a really good deal. I think it's like a $30 or $40 trade paperback, and it's worth every penny because you get a ton of Carnage stuff in there. So definitely check it out. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.